Welcome to the second semester of AP Calculus BC, uh, the start of the spring. Gotta love it. Uh, Unit 7 for us is a mishmash of some various different, don't really fit well anywhere topics. So for a couple of weeks, we're going to take a look at a few things. We're going to look at sequence analysis. We're going to look at uh, some, uh, some other stuff. Um, L'Hopital's rule for calculating limits, how to apply that, uh, and then integrals that stretch to infinity. So it's like three semi-major random topics that don't really fit anywhere else. So if it's okay with you, I'd like to give it a go uh, with today talking about sequences. Sequences today. That's the plan. Got to say three things about sequences. Three things you should know about sequences. One, a sequence is a list of numbers. A1, A2, A3, A4, those are indices, indexes. Um, it means the first term in the sequence, the second term in the sequence, the third term in the sequence, the fourth term in the sequence. A sequence is a list of numbers. Second, a sequence is a list of numbers. A1, A2, A3, A4. It's a list of numbers. Not a set of numbers, it's a list of numbers, it's ordered. There is a first one, and a second one, and a third one, and so on. Third, a sequence is a list of numbers. It's a list. There are commas, not plus signs. Commas not plus signs. That doesn't matter a lot now. It really matters a lot in about two weeks. Okay? So, if nothing else, we know what a sequence is. So, sequences come in various flavors. Some sequences are defined explicitly. And when a sequence is defined explicitly, uh, the nth term is given in terms of n. It's uh, also called a closed form, for those of you who want to sound really smart at math parties. So in such a case you would have a a rule for the nth term and the rule for the nth term in this particular example that i am making up off the top of my head is that the nth term is negative one to the n over n plus two that's the that's the rule i have for the nth term so what does that mean that means that if i want to know what a sub one is the first term in the list, I do negative 1 to the first over 1 plus 2. And if I want to know what the second term in the sequence is, that's negative 1 squared over 2 plus 2. And if I want to know what the third term is, that's negative 1 cubed over 3 plus 2, and so on. So, the sequence a sub n is the list negative 1 third one-fourth, negative one-fifth, I imagine the next term is one-sixth, and so on down the line. That is the explicitly defined sequence. And explicit sequences are fantastic because if I want to know what the 10,000th term in the sequence is, I just substitute 10,000 for n, and I know what the 10,000th number in the sequence is. Some sequences are what we call recursively defined. In a recursively defined sequence, terms are defined uh, in relation to previous terms. So to do that, you have to have a first term, or a first couple of terms, and then some rule that connects a given term to previous terms. So uh, in this particular case, we'll let a sub 1 
be the number 4 and a sub n plus 1 be a sub n plus 3 for n greater than or equal to 1. So what does that mean? That means that the first term is 4. The second term is the first term plus 3. That's 4 plus 3. The third term is the second term plus 3. That's 7 plus 3, and so on. So the nth term of the sequence, the sequence itself, a sub n, I'll be clear about that. That notation means the sequence a sub n. It refers to the entire list of numbers. That's 4, 7, 10. I imagine that the next number is 13, dot, dot, dot. And it's got to be a dot, 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 because a sequence is an ordered list of numbers, and it is an infinite ordered list of numbers. OK? So there are two ways that sequences are defined. There they both are. So you are familiar with two kinds of sequences from your pre-calculus work. One is the arithmetic sequence. The other will be the geometric sequence. Arithmetic sequences are sequences of the form a, a plus d, a plus 2d, and so on. There's a first term, and then there is a common difference that is added to achieve future terms from previous terms. That's the way it goes. Uh, if you want to define an arithmetic sequence explicitly, we say that the nth term is the first term plus n minus 1 times d. That's very familiar to us from our work in pre-calculus mathematics. If you want to define it recursively, then the first term is given, and the nth, n plus 1th term is the nth term plus some number d for n greater than or equal to 1. That's the way arithmetic sequences work. There's a first term, and then you add d every time. So, oh, this would be example 3. Given, oh, did I do two one? I didn't. Sorry, folks. Example three, given this sequence, ln5, ln10, ln20, ln40, and so on, I want to show it is an arithmetic sequence, and I want to find the tenth term. I want to show that it's arithmetic, and I want to find the tenth term. That's the plan. So how do I show that something is arithmetic? I want to know that the difference between any two consecutive terms is the same. I want to know if the difference between any two consecutive terms is the same. So, in this case, oh, wait a minute, we're subtracting logs. That means we divide the arguments. We're subtracting logs, we divide the arguments. We're subtracting logs, we divide the arguments. Yes, the sequence is arithmetic yes the sequence is arithmetic yes it is what's the tenth term well the tenth term is the first term plus nine common differences the first term plus nine common differences the first term plus nine common differences uh, and if we're going to use laws of logarithms at all, 2 to the 9th is 512, 
So this is the natural log of 2,000, oh heck, 560. That's your tenth term. Well, we know about arithmetic sequences. We studied them at length in pre-calculus. And so I'm very comfortable saying onward and upward geometric sequences. Geometric sequences have some term A, right? That had an A. This has an A. And then we multiply by R and then multiply by R again and so on. That's a geometric sequence. So what do you do with that? Um, you make sure you drive home some points. We could define the sequence explicitly or recursively. If we define the sequence explicitly, then the nth term is the first term times R to the N minus 1. The first term doesn't have an R in it. The second term has one power of R. The third term has two powers of R and so on. If we define the sequence recursively, A has to be given. And then the future terms are whatever the previous term is times R. And that happens for N greater than or equal to 1. So... Uh, given the sequence, okay, how will we do this? 5, negative 15, 45, negative 135, and so on. I want to show that it is geometric. And then I want to find the tenth term. Those are the things I want to do. I want to show the sequence is geometric. Then I want to find the tenth term. So how do I know that a sequence is geometric? Well, that's not bad. I want to show that the ratios of consecutive terms are always the same. In an arithmetic sequence, the differences are the same. In a geometric sequence, the ratios are always the same. In this case, negative 3, negative 3, negative 3. Yes, the sequence is geometric. Yes, 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 yes. So what's the tenth term look like? Well, the tenth term is the first term times r to the ninth. I know what the first term is. I have r to the ninth power, and that's some big number. Whatever that is. How am I doing so far? Good. One more thing. One more thing we should talk about. We should talk about the limit of a sequence because the idea of limit is going to come up big in this unit. The limit of a sequence is the limit of its nth term as n approaches infinity. So if we want to talk about the limit of a sequence, we take a look at the limit of its nth term as n approaches infinity. If the sequence has a finite limit, we say that the sequence converges. It converges to that limit. Otherwise, the sequence diverges. Either you converge or you diverge. If the sequence has a finite limit, the sequence converges. If the sequence does not have a finite limit, the sequence diverges. So, time to play everybody's favorite game, do they converge? Never mind. 
There's an A sub N. There's a B sub N. There's a C sub N. So you want to hit the pause button and you want to ask yourself, self, what is the limit as n approaches infinity of each of those expressions? If I get a number, the answer is yes. If I don't get a number, the answer is no. So that's just something to think about. Hit the pause button and do that. No, really, hit the pause button. Okay, so let's assume that you did that. A sub n. Does A sub n converge? You betcha, because the limit is 3 as n gets large. The limit as n approaches infinity of A sub n is 3. Don't want to get sloppy with my notation here. With the B sub n, what happens with the B sub n? No, that does not converge. What happens to this part? This part gets closer and closer to 1. And so the terms keep bouncing back and forth between some number that's practically negative 1 and then some number that's practically positive 1. So the sequence, if you take it out far enough, goes negative 1, positive 1, negative 1, positive 1, negative 1, positive 1, negative 1, positive 1. So that doesn't work. There is no finite limit, and so we say that the sequence diverges. As for C sub n, C sub n, that's a yes, because the limit as n approaches infinity of C sub n is 0. The numerator never gets bigger than 1, never gets smaller than negative 1, but the denominator gets larger and larger and larger without bounds. So you have some very small, finite number over some number that's getting larger and larger without bound. And so those are the kinds of things you want to be thinking about when you think about sequences. Do they converge? Awesome. Wonderful. Super. That's it. That's all she wrote. That's, that's it. That's all. Tomorrow, more about this convergence and a special theorem that sometimes helps. See you then.